Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video we're going to learn how to create a basic Gantt chart in Microsoft Excel 2013. So before we draw the chart let's take a look at the data that we need to make a Gantt chart. In column A I've got all my tasks listed in my example here they're represented by letters of the alphabet and I have these tasks grouped into categories and these categories represent the five main project management process groups initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and control and closing tasks. And for the sake of simplicity I've allocated three tasks to each of these five process groups. For each task in column B you'll see that I have a start date, in column C I have a duration and in column D I have an end date for each task. And you'll also note that for my five headings, I've got blank cells in, cell in columns B, C and D. So if you want headings on your Gantt chart, just leave those blank. We're now ready to draw the chart. To do this, click on the Insert ribbon. And from the Chart tools here in the centre of the ribbon, the ones that we're looking for are, is, are bar charts. So select the down arrow beside the bar chart. And the type of bar chart we need is a 2D stacked bar chart. So select that option. And this gives us a blank chart that we now need to populate with some values. Up at the top in the design ribbon, there is a select data button. So click on the select data button and this displays the select data source window. And this is an important window for drawing uh, Gantt charts in Excel because this is the window that we need to tell Excel what values we want on our chart. So quite simply, the first thing we need to do is add the start dates and then add in the duration. So let's go ahead and do that. In the select data source window, there are two important boxes. First, we need to add in uh, with, by clicking on the add button on the left box. So click on that add button there. And this gives us an edit series options. And this is where we want to add the start date. So type in start date as a title for our edit series here. In the series values, click on the select tool and select with my mouse in column B all the values underneath the start date heading. In my example here, from cell B2 down to cell B21. Make sure that you're capturing the blank cells here or else your chart will be out of line. In the Edit Series window, click on the Select tool again and click on OK. We now need to add the second uh, of two values we need to add in here in our left-hand box. and This is our duration, so click on Add again. In the Series name, uh, select uh, Type in Duration. And in the... Um, just make the correction there, duration, and in the series values click on the select tool to the right hand side and once again in column C select all the values underneath the durations including the blank cells and click on the select tool again and click on OK. Click on OK one more time to take a look at our chart. We can see here now that we have the makings of a Gantt chart but we're not quite there yet. The first thing that you notice is that on our y-axis is that our values are represented by numbers and we'd like to change these to represent our tasks and our headers. So click on the y-axis with your left mouse button, right-click to bring up the pop-up menu and choose the Select Data option. This time we want to look at the box on the right-hand side of the Select Data Source window. Uh, you can see the numeric values that are on our chart listed there, so let's change those by clicking on the Edit button. This time in the Access Labels window, we need to choose um, our labels in column A. So select from cell A2 down to cell A21. Make sure you don't select A1 in my example here. And click on OK in the Access Labels window. Click on OK to remove the Select Data Source window. And you can see that our tasks and our headings are labeled here, but they're in the wrong order. Now this is quite easy to change. So uh, right click on that uh, on the Y axis choose format axis from the pop-up window and this will display in Excel uh, the format axis options on the right hand side. And The option you're looking for is down here near the end, categories in reverse order. Just click on the checkbox there and we can now see that our categories are listed in reverse order on our chart and they match the values in column A. You'll notice that our tasks are represented by blue and orange bars uh, and that our headers are represented by blanks and that's simply because we did not give them any values on, our, on in columns B, C and D. The next thing we need to do is to remove the blue bars so select with your left mouse button uh, any one of the blue bars and over on the right hand side in our format data series window um, choose the paint cans that's, that's the, the fill and line option here so select that and just choose no fill and that will remove the blue bars. Um, they're still there, but you can't see them because they don't have any colour. 
The last thing that we need to do now is to remove some of the blank space that Excel puts in before our first date and after our last date on our chart. So we'd like to make uh, the brown bars a little bit wider here. And in order to be able to do that, it's important to understand uh, how Excel stores dates. Let's go back over to column uh, B and cell C, uh, B3 and click on the first date of our project, which is the 1st of January 2013. If I right-click on that cell and choose Format Cells from the pop-up option, we can see that this cell is formatted as a date. If I change from date to general, uh, we can see here in sample on the right-hand side that Excel stores the 1st of January 2013 with a value of 41,275. So make note of that value. I'm going to click Cancel here because I don't want to change uh, the format of that cell. The last date of the project is the 12th of March, so click on that cell, right-click, and choose Format Cells. And we can see this time that it's also um, formatted as a date. If I click on General, I'll get the value that Excel has for the 12th of March 2013, and that's 41,345. Make note of that value as well. Again, I'm going to click Cancel because I don't want to change the format of that cell. So to change the um, axis here, we need to click on the x-axis, and then my chart is at the top. So with your left mouse button, select the x-axis, and then you will see over on the right-hand side the format axis window appearing. And you'll notice here near the top that there's a minimum and maximum values, and we need to replace these with the values that we've noted just a few moments ago. So the minimum value for the 1st of January 2013 was 41,275. So I'm going to type that in here in the minimum window. And in the maximum box, I'm going to type in the maximum value that I noted, which was 41,345. 41,345, and press Enter. And we can see on our chart that the space before and after the brown bars has now been taken away. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the major units from 10, which represents 10 days, down to 7, to represent the 7 days of the week. So type in 7 in the major units here, and press Enter. And I can now close the format axis uh, options over here on the right hand side. And I'm going to make my Gantt chart just a little bit wider uh, so that my x-axis reads a little bit easier here. And I can see that my dates are now uh, blocked off in groups of seven days. The last thing I'm going to do is just to show you one, one final thing here. Let's take a look at task G in the center of our chart. And we can see that it has a duration of 20 days. And let's say I needed to change that down to 10 days. So let's type in 10 days here. We can see that our chart, our bar on our Gantt chart, uh, is made smaller to represent the 10 days duration. If I change it back to 20 days, we can see, if we look at the chart on the right-hand side, that the bar is returned to its longer version here. So we can actually make changes to the start dates and the durations and the end dates, and they will be reflected dynamically on my Gantt chart. So that's how you create a basic Gantt chart in Excel 2013. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.